we're here at DevOps France and I am joined by Andy Petrella. Andy, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. And what are you here to talk about at DevOps? So, what I'm going to talk about uh, at DevOps, right? Um, so actually, this time I'm going to talk about new data science. Um, so, actually data science is new things, but it's pretty hard as well. And it's changing right now. And I'm trying to explain how things are evolving in data science, from where it came and to where I expecting it to go. So, um, and in order to, you know, to introduce this, these changes, I'm talking about why the JVM is a good fit for that, and DevOps is a good, of course, even for this kind of thing because we know that the Java community is very uh, important in DevOps. Uh, still, it was. How is it going again? Java Polis, right? Ten years ago, something. Yes, yeah, <laughs> and it's right. kind of mushroomed to yeah. <laughs> slowly take over the world. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, this is mainly what I'm going to talk about. Um, yeah, I will start by introducing what is data science, in some sense, uh, why it's worth considering into enterprises. Um, right, because a few years ago we had everyone was talking about big data, the marketers yeah. got hold of it, people were throwing yeah. silly amounts of money at big data startups, and yeah. I think maybe now people are a bit disillusioned by that or kind of... Yeah, actually, it's part of my talk, actually. Big data, it's a kind of word that I try to avoid as much as possible. Um, because, yeah, a lot of money has been spent in there and to collect data, to store data. And then, at some point, they, they thought, okay, but now, what we, can we do with that? What can we do with the data? Can we plot them? Okay, but what can we do with the plots afterwards? So... Um, now they start understanding that data actually um, is a wrapper onto information. It's a kind of proxy of inf to information, and this is the information that they want to read. This information that they want to use in their in their business. And based on information, they can extract some knowledge based on the knowledge that they have already on the system. So based on these two knowledges, they can be better than the, the uh, competitor, for instance, something like this. So this is really now focusing on data science rather than big data, but data science came buzz, I'd say, because of big data. So what's the current status quo for data science? What the what? the, what's Sorry? the current status quo for ah. data science? So data science, um, it's yeah. more, it's pretty much like computer science, right? It's uh, more, it's nothing and everything at the same time. Um, so I tend to to say that why data science is important in general, right? Rather than what is data science. Uh, data science is a lot of things, including statistics, machine learning, statistical learning, or uh, graph analysis, probabilistic models, or whatever. So a lot of things. Um, but why it's worth having data science is because you want to, you know, to optimize your processes, for instance, and you want to detect failures, so you want to, uh, to use the data of your competitors to be better than them, things like this, right? So uh, it's about competition and, and business, finally, right? It's not anymore about technologies. Technologies is, is the tool that you use in order to achieve something. It's not worth spending too much time on that. So why do you think the JVM is such a great fit for this area? <clears throat> JVM is a great fit for that. It's more historical, I was historical than technology, um, I would say. I mean, JVM is deployed across enterprise for years, 10 plus years, most probably. Java has 20, had 20 years last year, 20 years last year. So, and it has a long, uh, you know, a lot of expertise has been spent on it in order to tune it and to make it available, to make it uh, sustainable for, for big enterprises, for big departments, for defense, NASA, for all kind of different um, uh, users. That means that it was, it was a good fit I and mean, it was a no-brainer choice, I would say, for instance, for open source developers to start developing Hadoop. Why, why did they choose? Um, uh, why did they choose? Had, uh, sorry, JVM over I don't know maybe Python. Right. 
because they wanted their sys apps to develop, you know, to deploy these things at large scale, and most probably they were used to to have enterprise, you know, infrastructure based on the JVM rather than on Python. And maybe if it would have been chosen instead of the JVM, a lot of work has would have been put on the, J, on the Python, you know. Um, uh, so runtime rather than a Java to runtime, and then maybe uh, the, the situation would have been flipped uh, upside down. But it wasn't the case because they want to be fast on the market. And then I see other kind of trends, like obviously you've got Spark, Apache Flink, yeah. Kafka, everything in that kind of big streaming revolution that's happening. Yeah. So this is this is another step in the, in the big data of data science things. So why Spark is better than Hadoop, for instance, or considers better than Hadoop, for instance? There is no, to me, technical reason for that. The, the main reason why Spark is, is, is um, so important right now uh, and Hadoop is decreasing is because it's simple. It's simple to use. Where Hadoop can be a hassle, uh, to install, to maintain, and so on. Spark is pretty easy to use, so you just, you know, untar your your Spark distro. You start working, you know, on your symbol box, and the API is very simple because it respects some functional paradigm. Um, so since it's very simple, a lot of people were interested in it because, you know, uh, the steep, the, the learning curve is not that steep. Uh, it might become become steep at, at the long term because. You are doing, I, I don't know, harder stuff. Or, I mean, I mean, machine learning can be very something very hard to do, uh, and then it becomes hard. But this is not about Hadoop versus Spark. At that case, it's more about you know mathematical concepts and and, and compu computing in general. Um, well, and and this streaming. Uh, I mean, streaming is, is pretty hard as well. We had Storm at that time, right? Uh, now we have Flink and, and Spark Streaming <coughs> and Kafka. Um, but, yeah, I think this is the logical step after uh, what we had uh, before. It's like, okay, now we have that, it's pretty good, but it's hard to use, so how to make things easy to use for, for everybody. Uh, right, so it's kind of... People are saying a few years ago, data scientist is going to be the sexiest pro job in the world, and now people are saying actually, data science, anyone can do it. It's not the barriers to entry are. Well, I mean. <laughs> What's your take? Um, everybody can work with data science. That doesn't mean that everybody is the data scientist, right? Uh, first of all, what is the data scientist? I'm, don't, I'm not sure. Do actually. you think that's a trend? That might be a trend term that. It is definitely a trend term, right? So um, it's more about marketing than uh, than working because than, than work description, job description, right? Uh, data scientists are very different. Like programmers can be very different. So there, there are people focusing on you know graph oriented models. The others are focusing on uh, you know they're very specifically good in random forest kind of models or assembling or they, they, they are very good at uh, deep learning, they are not very good at the recurrent network, uh, but they are very specific in LSTM. So there are different things um, where you can be very good and then it's hard to define what is a data scientist and why. And it's even harder to think, yeah, everybody can be a data scientist. I mean, um, and this is with the talk that I proposed this year to Strata, I'm part of the Strata program committee too, and and I see a lot of people talking about data science, most, but it's never general. And since it's never general, you can only be specific, right? Yeah. And if you, if it has to be specific, then. Not everybody can be specific. I mean, it's very hard to, to, to it's explain. It's like a bit of a false hedgemony, basically. That people, what, sorry? People have this idea that it's very hegemonic, it's all the same, and then they're not really kind of thinking. Yeah, well, the, the thing is that a lot of people ask me, how can I be a data scientist? And <laughs> so I, it's it's, a... I mean, it's like, how can I be a programmer? I yeah. mean, it's by programming. You just it's uh, rather you learn these technologies and then you push it into your career but it's not yeah and data science is more about science than than technologies though um, so uh, 
it's a lot about, a lot about math and the underlying concept that definitely probabilistic statistics and so on so if you want to get into it you have to first learn these things uh, and then today since the technologies are changing and they are helping to to get this computing then so we get back to data science uh, computing so the, the computing side of the data science then you have to learn these technologies but first you have to understand what you do just not say okay I'm taking R I'm going to apply this random forest then I have these importances for my variables then I know that this cause that and actually this is a very um, this is wrong this is completely false I mean, this, this is, this is uh, absurd actually you know? right. Yeah. I think that kind of goes back to that idea, isn't it? Partly why big data is not something people banded about. They're saying, we can stream all this data, look how much data we have, but people weren't doing anything with it. Like, if you can't exactly. harness that data, it's just fluff, it's got no value. It has no value because data, per se, has no value. No. It's yeah, just... It has no value at all. The only information, only the information has value. Uh, in order to get information out of data, you need to to apply these data science processes onto it and, and since as I said so every data science product you know has to be very specific and, and is targeting one business case generally uh, you can the information that you will extract from the data is also very correlated with the problem that you are trying to solve right so that means that the information that you will extract is also related you know the money that the return on investment that you will have out of data will also be um, very correlated to the business that you are targeting as well. So it's, yeah, data has no value, information has value only if it's attached to business. That means that there is knowledge in between that is involved. So you cannot have somebody that has a long history in, in banks to understand how they can uh, predict, I don't know, health issues. For instance, it's really tough. It's it's not the same thing. So there are time series on the other on the other side. You have static data, uh, static data like genes or whatever. Um, so data has no value, only the information, and the information that you will extract is accurate if you have more data. Yeah. Right. So data is a cost. Information that we extract is um, is a value. Thank you, that's very, some really interesting points there, Anna. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.